All right, looks like we're ready to get started. Um, I'm Claudia Cutter. I'm a marketing associate at EPE, um, and uh, I support the NERC team. Thank you for joining EPE for this webinar discussing establishing transmission system planning performance requirements with NERC standard TPL 0015. Um, we hope to share some helpful information with you and welcome questions and discussion. Please feel free to enter your questions or comments in the chat and the panel will answer them at the end of the webinar. I also wanted to let you know that today's webinar will be recorded and we will share it on our website, epeconsulting.com and social media in case you'd like to reference it later or share it with your colleagues. Um, and now I'm pleased to introduce you to JC Culberson, our Director of NERC and Regulatory Compliance. And now I'll hand it off to JC. Great, thank you very much, Claudia. All right, everyone, uh, welcome. Thank you all for uh, for showing up to this. We'll be uh, discussing TPL 001 Tech 5.1 today, uh, replacing TPL uh, 001 Tech 4. So uh, this standard goes into effect, is enforceable next month, July 1st, 2023. At any time, if you have any questions, again, just want to reiterate this, you can uh, type them in the chat and we will get to them um, as they come in. So I think everyone here is probably familiar with NERC and the ERO and, and you know, what, what happens there. So uh, I'll just give a high level brief, uh, you know, NERC 101 here. Uh, the, you know, NERC and the ERO consists of obviously NERC, um, and the regional entities, NPCC, MRO, CERT, TRE, and WEC. Um, so all of these together take on the activities of the Compliance Monitoring and Enforcement Program, the CMEP, and that is directed by FERC. Um, today we're going to be talking about one of the NERC reliability standards, and um, we'll go ahead and get into it now for TPL 001-5.1. So first off, what, what sort of uh, predicated this change? What led to this, this amendment of TPL 001-4? Uh, uh, two FERC orders actually, uh, 754 and 786. Uh, both of them really focusing on single points of failure in the protection systems on trans and during the transmission system uh, planning process. And so NERC directed, a uh, FERC directed NERC, sorry, to, address the single points of failure as well as some other uh, details that we'll get into a little bit later. I'm not going to read through the entire um, uh, slide screen here. That would be terribly boring, but you're you know you're, you're going to have access to this if you if you need more background on these uh, specific FERC orders, uh, they're listed right here. But the long and short of it is that uh, FERC uh, uh, instructed NERC to address single points of failure and other gaps in the transmission planning process. So what's new? Let's talk about the changes. Uh, requirement one, uh, they took out the language for mod 10 and 12 and obviously replaced that with mod 32 since mod 32 became effective when mods 10 and 12 and other mod standards uh, became ineffective. So. Uh, in essence, mod 32 replaced those. So moving on, requirement 1112 uh, was removed altogether. We'll get into that in just a moment. Um, and requirement 2, 214, 244, and 245 all have added verbiage there. And, and we will talk in a little bit more detail about what those changes were. Uh, requirements three and four also had some um, some changes, and of course, in the table there there are changes specifically uh, for P five uh, uh, category. So, well, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about these changes in some detail. So for the first one, we talked about it just a moment ago. Uh, they struck mod 10 and 12 language and inserted mod 32 simply because that is the model that will be used now. 
So this was a pretty easy change. There's not a lot um, other than this. There doesn't appear to be any substantive change um, to this uh, requirement at all. So moving on to requirement one, part 1.1.2, this one was um, removed completely from the new standard. So where um, the system model shall represent known outages of generation of uh, or transmission facilities with a duration of at least six months. There's more language added to other requirements that will address these sort of long lead time um, uh, issues. So again, we'll get into that in just a moment, but for right now, 112 was removed and um, that's that's just the that that's all that happened here. So next. In requirement 2.1.4, this language is pretty much the same with the exception of the addition of uh, this, this statement in red here. The assessment shall be performed for categories P0 and P1, identified in table one with system peak, off peak, system peak or off peak conditions that the system is expected to experience uh, when the known outages are planned. So this was this was uh, obviously something that came from the direction of NERC and in the meetings with uh, with with FERC and uh, NERC and the the standard drafting teams. Uh, this sentence was added just to incorporate the uh, the the category P zero and P one, so no contingency and uh, the the P one contingencies. So two point four. Point four. Same thing. This. Uh, whoops. Excuse me. I got a little trigger happy there. So again, assessment shall be performed in the P1 category uh, identified in Table One. Again, this this simply takes P0 out, but but uh, keeps P1 categories here to be studied. And this is all new verbiage altogether for requirement 2.4.5. So when entity spare equipment strategy could result in the unavailability of major transmission equipment that has a lead time of one year or more, um, such as transformer, we'll talk a little bit more about this in just a second. The impact of this possible unavailability on system performance shall be addressed. Uh, based on this assessment, an analysis shall be performed for the selected P1 and P2 category events identified in Table 1 for which the unavailability is expected to produce more severe system impacts on its portion of the bulk electric system. The analysis shall simulate the conditions that the system is expected to experience during the possible unavailability of the long lead time equipment. So, you know, if if you're studying a uh, transformer outage and and you realize that um, you know you've got a 500 to 115 kV bank out there and it's the lead time on getting that specific piece of equipment is going to be a year or more, that's what's being contemplated here in in this uh, rewrite of this requirement. And again. If there are any questions at all, feel free to to uh, post them in the chat and we will address them. All right. So for uh, requirements three and requirements four parts three point two and four point two, there have been there has been language added here as well. So. And TPL 1-4 studies shall be performed to assess the impact of the events which are identified by the list created in requirement 3 or 3.5. So same thing here, that language really hasn't changed. The addition is that if the analysis concludes there's cascading caused by the occurrence of extreme events, an evaluation of possible actions designed to reduce the likelihood or mitigate the consequences and adverse impacts of the event shall be conducted. Uh, that's the same language added in both. This is a direct result of uh, uh, some direction from FERC given to NERC and the, uh, the uh, regional entities. So in the past, it was fine to identify those uh, 
extreme events that could cause cascading outages. Um, but there was no follow up to actually uh, address those. So really all this did was put an actionable item in here so that that part would actually be addressed. So we've studied, you know, the, the extreme event. We know that there's, you know, there's the possibility of cascading outages. And all this says is now you must study to do something about it. All right, we'll get to the summary here. So again, the amendments to TPL 001 contained at TPL 001 Tech 5.1 um, is a just a response to the FERC orders that, that we discussed earlier, 754 and 786. Uh, again, uh, designed to address single points of failure in the protection system modeling and to clean up some of the language you know where there you could identify issues but not necessarily put a pan a plan in place to address those issues so pretty common sense stuff there also there were some minor changes in the standard where a uh, special protection system was replaced by you know remedial action scheme in, in a couple of areas and the table has changed uh, uh, for category p5 to account for the long lead time uh, equipment uh, uh, replacement. So, all right, new version of the standard dictates that the same model used in Mod 32 will be the basis for transmission planning studies required in TPL 1-5.1. Uh, As we discussed earlier, it replaced Mod 10 and 12. Well, that, that project did. Additionally, NERC took this opportunity to further define language in the requirements to address actionable steps to be taken as we just talked about the, uh, the, the last sets of standards that our uh, requirements rather that, that we brought up. Um, should a cascading outage or rear extreme event um, be present now, there's an action item to follow up there. So again, TPL 001-5.1 becomes enforceable on July 1st, and we are here to help if you need anything that. And with that, I'll be happy to take any questions that you may have. So that was very fast. It's a, the changes to the standard um, were, it, it wasn't like a wholesale rewrite of the standard. So it was fairly easy to meet out what the changes are and the impacts to uh, transmission planners. So, Again, any questions you may have, I'll be happy to uh, to entertain those now. And Claudia, if you don't mind, when um, you know, if we, should we get any uh, any questions now, uh, you can uh, call them out and we'll address yeah, absolutely. them. Absolutely. Sure. Okay. All right, if you don't have any questions on TPL 1-5, uh, any other questions you have about NERC or any sort of regulatory compliance, grid modernization or anything, I mean, we're we're here to answer any questions for you. So if you have anything you'd like to bring up or uh, wanna know about, by all means, uh, now will be the time to ask. Well, I tell you what I will do. Uh, I will put my um, email address in this chat. Well, it looks like we've got one in the chat. All right. How will this impact protection coordination? Well, that's a good question. Uh, protection coordination. So for this, we're talking about, um, you know, single points of failure in protection systems. So when you coordinate with, as a transmission planner with a generator owner who is, you know, connecting to your system, um, I guess that would take that would be something to consider for sure. Also, you'll be using uh, well, you're already using mod 32 mod 10 and 12 have been retired for a good many years, but yeah, it would. 
protection core really obviously depend on the, the the sort of protection systems that you are employing, uh, you know, on your system. And obviously, you know, uh, you would just need to ensure that, you know, the the regular coordination with the generator owner uh, takes place. That's really not contemplated as much in this standard um, as it is in others. But based on the model and the long lead times that have to be contemplated in, in this uh, standard now, um, there may be some issues there with the different kinds of protection systems that you would employ. But uh, again, that would be more on the design side. You're very welcome. And if you if anyone has any questions at all, feel free to send me a uh, an, an email. Here's my email address. Also, uh, something that, that maybe some of you don't know about, we have a biweekly newsletter that we send out and it has news articles. It has a lot of well, it has every ISO, every uh, in the United States, every regional entity, NERC, uh, along with some public utility commission information on it as well. So any meetings that will be coming up in the next two weeks, any uh, standard drafting teams, anything like that that you might want to be a part of, all of that will be in this newsletter. So if you would like to receive the newsletter, it's, it's complimentary. Uh, just send me a note and I'll put you on the distribution list. All right, if anyone else has any questions, uh, fire away. And I also wanted to mention um, if you're going to be attending the EEI, the Edison Electric Institute Conference, um, which is June 11th through 13th in Austin, um, JC will be there, so feel free to reach out. Yep. Yes, indeed. All right, well, thank you very much, all of you, for uh, showing up today. I know it was it was a little bit faster than we uh, had had planned on, but there weren't a whole lot of changes. So. Um, you know, you've got my email address there. If you're interested in the newsletter, please let me know. Or if you have any questions about this standard or any other, I'll be happy to uh, connect with you and, and talk through it. So with that, I, I thank you all for, uh, for your attendance today and uh, feel free to reach out anytime. Thank you.